Welcome to the Subbrief YouTube page. I'm your host, Aaron. I write and produce the submarine briefing lectures that you enjoy on the Patreon page and here on YouTube. If you would like to see more of these, please make sure you leave a comment, like, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And that pushes the YouTube algorithm out to more and more people that can then come and join the channel. If we get 2,000 members on our Patreon page, which we're well on our way to doing, I'm going to release a full unedited subbrief right here on YouTube before the end of the year. That's our goal, all right? You could really help us out by just clicking the like and subscribe and leaving a comment down there. Okay, I would appreciate it. Today, let's talk about Russia's submarine satellite projects. Our story begins in July 7th, 1998 in the Barents Sea at about 0715 in the morning, a missile breaks the surface of the quiet waters launched by K-407, a Delta IV ballistic missile nuclear submarine, and she changes warfare forever on this date. What's on this missile are two nano satellites. It's not a reentry vehicle. It's not a missile test. Uh, it's certainly not a nuclear warhead. It is positioning a satellite in orbit for the first time. They're using a modified R-29R missile. The R-29R was the missile used on the Delta III SSBNs. Um, what they did was they added a third liquid fuel stage to that rocket, making it even more powerful, giving it more energy and the ability to reach low Earth orbit. And they successfully tested this missile with satellites that were operational in 1998. So this was another first for Russia. Uh, not only did they have the first satellite in space, the first man in space, uh, I believe they even had the first dog in space, but they also now have the first satellite launched from a naval vessel operational in space and uh, the first time ever a satellite has been launched from a submarine while submerged. This is their huge uh, technical achievements that they're making in 1998. Uh, the satellite's names were TubSat-N and TubSat-N1, and they had limited bandwidth communication between the two and the ground, and their primary purpose for the Berlin Technical University study was to monitor large and medium-sized mammalian migration groups across the Sahara in Africa, which it did. But you could imagine... Uh, other applications for this type of satellite. Not only could they put reconnaissance satellites in orbit, as long as they met the uh, weight parameters, they could also put in, um, you know, communication satellites. That's a big one, and other other photo intelligence satellites as well. They certainly weren't limited to uh, the tracking of large and medium-sized objects across the Sahara or Savannah. So there were three types of the R twenty nine RM still missile. This is a modified spacecraft carrier. So whenever you see the word still, uh, which is Russian for literally calm weather, still, still weather, um, it's just talking about spacecraft or satellite payloads. There is another R-29RM that we'll talk about in another subbrief at a different time. But for today, the first R-29RM still uh, was launched in 1998 with the first successful test of a 30-pound payload from the Berlin Technical University. The second one was from 2006. Uh, they launched the still 2.1, which increased the payload size up to 175 pounds and had a successful test doing that. The third one that they designed but did not uh, build because it didn't fit on the submarine was the Still 2R, and that could launch a payload up to 440 ton or pounds, not tons, pounds, uh, but that can only be used at land-based facilities. It, w it wouldn't fit on the submarine. But in land the land-based uh, Russian space program had plenty of rockets. They didn't need the third one. So it probably wasn't even built. And if it was, it was only for testing. They certainly didn't need it. But the first two, not only were they built, they worked. So they went back to the drawing board a little bit in 2002. This is four years after the first successful test. And they went to a Delta III, the K-4 for Ryzen. This has the older missile on it, the unmodified R-29R. Well, they put a satellite on that and they wanna see if they can get uh, a satellite into orbit using just a two-stage liquid fuel rocket without the additional third stage. And they test this in a series of tests called Demonstrator 2. They did two launches at two different times using two different submarines 
from the Barents Sea, and they both failed to achieve orbit. Technically, the second one was lost in flight, so it, they might have achieved orbit, but they, they were unable to find it and use the satellite again, which is effectively a failure. They simply didn't have enough fuel to get with just these two stages up into a consistent low Earth orbit. These tests were canceled after 2002, and they went back to using the three-stage modified R-29R-M missile. Their next test was in May 26, 2006. Again, another four years goes by. They're going back to the Delta IV, which is the larger of the ballistic missile submarines that we're talking about today. And in the Barents Sea at 4.50 p.m., K112 the Tula launches a Compass 2 satellite from her missile silo while in a submerged condition. The satellite weighs about 175 pounds, achieves a low Earth heliocentric orbit, and is successful and stable in flight. She communicates with the ground and uh, does her job very well. This is a uh, this is leading the way to go forward with other imaging satellites, signaling reconnaissance satellites, and even communication satellites. What Russia is doing by demonstrating this capability and practicing it is reestablishing a satellite network of communication and reconnaissance after a major war. During a major war with whoever else, China, America, the uh, European Union, doesn't matter who it is, the satellite connections or the satellite networks are certainly going to be disrupted and will need to be replaced. Whether that war goes nuclear or not, the satellites are certainly going to be hit. And this is a quick, rapid way to have a mobile platform to replace those satellites after the shooting stops. Uh, and possibly even during the war as well, if you think about it. There are 16 tubes on the Delta IV. They could have a combination of nuclear weapons, conventional weapons, and satellites in any number of those tubes. So this gives the Delta IV a lot of versatility in future warfare. So the implications of what we saw from this was the SSBNs can quickly replace reconnaissance satellites. And I want to stress that they don't have to wait for the shooting to stop. They can do this as the satellites are damaged and brought down. They can set up uh, more. They can pre-position these submarines before the conflict begins as well. They don't have to wait till it starts. Uh, the Delta IV, the Delphin class, that's Russian for dolphin. Uh, they have nuclear and ultra small caliber nuclear weapons. Uh, for those of you that may not know, the ultra small caliber nuclear weapons are like tactical nukes, but they're between five and 50 megatons apiece. So they make a very small mushroom cloud whenever they hit you. They also have conventional warheads on these this ballistic missile submarine the uh, missile, the, the name of the missile is the SSN-23 Skiff. That's the NATO name. And she can also launch a 2.2 ton bomb, conventional bomb that has a deep penetrating warhead that will be conventional. It's not nuclear, but it will go right into the side of a mountain and destroy anything that's buried underneath the mountain, like deep bunkers, uh, ammo storage places, communication headquarters, uh, things that are, you know, deep below the ground for protection, this bomb is designed to hunt down those and destroy it with a multi-ton uh, conventional explosion. And now to this uh, arsenal, they've added satellite launch capability. The Delta IV can do all gamuts of conventional nuclear and information or anti-satellite warfare. All right, so this has been uh, Russia's submarine satellite projects. Uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this. And if you have, make sure you hit that like button and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.